this video, I'm going to show you how to attach buttons to your knitting. And if you already know how to attach buttons in regular sewing to regular fabric, you're ahead of the game, but there are a few things that are a little bit different when you're attaching buttons to your knitting. Let's go ahead and take a look. We are going to attach buttons to this little sample of knitting here, knit in mock rib. And I'm going to demonstrate on two different kinds of buttons. This first one is kind of just an ordinary button with four holes in it. And this one has just one hole on the back of it. Let's start with this one first. Now, one thing, I, I always like to attach my buttons with the yarn, using the same yarn that I used in the knitted piece. And we always use tapestry needles in knitting, but you'll find that oftentimes your needle will not go through the holes in the button. That's okay. We can use a finer needle. This needle, I, I couldn't, I've had this needle for so many years, I couldn't tell you what kind of needle it is or um, what it's normally used for. It has a pretty long eye on it and it's a long, sharp needle. Uh, if I knew more about sewing, I might be able to tell you exactly what this needle is normally used for. Whenever I pull this out in, in videos, people always ask. I'll just tell you now, I don't know. Hopefully someone will chime in in the comments with an idea of what kind of needle this is. So I know this needle fits through the holes in my button, so I can use it um, to s attach this button. And it just so happens that the yarn that I use to knit this is bulky yarn. So I'm not going to be able to just thread this yarn through the eye of this needle, so I'm going to use a needle threader. And this is just an inexpensive little thing that you can get at any fabric store. I used to have one that was, um, it had wire in kind of this funny shape, and I actually preferred it, but it disappeared. <laughs> I'm not sure where it went. But if I put this threader through there, it gives me a much bigger eye. I'm wetting down the yarn a little bit. Pull that through there, and then when I pull the threader through, the yarn is threaded. Now, if you have a needle-yarn combination where there's no way you're going to get the yarn through the needle, you can always separate the plies. You untwist the plies and separate them, you know, by removing one ply, two plies, doing it half and half, and then you can attach the button using less of the yarn, but using the same color and the same yarn. Just give it a tug though and make sure you didn't weaken the yarn so much that the yarn's going to break. This yarn would do just fine, but I can use all of the yarn. So I have the yarn threaded. I have a decent tail because I'm going to want kind of a tail end when I pull this through. I place the button where I want it, and then coming from the back, I don't have the greatest coordination when it comes to this, but I'm going to poke through one of those holes, pull it through, and leave a decent tail on the back, a few inches. Now you have the option of doing two lines up and down or a crisscross. I'm going to do a crisscross. I like the way those look. So I go down into the diagonal. There's half of it. Now I poke around. until I can find the next hole and go down into the diagonal to finish the crisscross. Now with this yarn and this lightweight button, I think that'll do it. <clears throat> if I was at all worried about the, uh, the strength of this yarn being able to hold, I might do that whole thing again and go through the holes a second time. Oh, also, if when you separate your yarn into plies, if that's what you have to do, if you find the yarn is not strong enough, then you'll need to just get a coordinating thread, a polyester thread, to attach the buttons. because It looks like yarn won't work in that project. So I have this all attached, and I've left myself um, some nice ends on the back here. I'm not even going to weave in the ends here. I'm just going to tie a very tight, very tidy knot. I can weave in the ends, but I'm confident that this knot's going to hold just fine. And I can cut that short, and that looks great. And the next kind of button that we can attach is one of these with just one hole on the back. I think this might be called a shank button. 
And again, my tapestry needle won't go through this hole, so I'm going to need to thread the needle with the bulky yarn. Find out where I want my button. That looks good. And then I'm going to poke the actual buttonhole through exactly where I want it so that I can put my yarn through, my needle through right there, go through the hole in the button, again leaving myself a nice tail in the back, and then go back down into the work but not into the same spot that you just came out of. You want to be just somewhere close but not in the same hole. Okay, I'm going to pull that through but I'm not going to tighten it up all the way yet. I'm going to go back in close but not through the same hole again. Through the loop in the button and then now I'm going to tighten things up. I'm going through twice. I don't tighten it up until I go back through the fabric a second time from the front. Go back down through there. Because of the weight of this button and because it's only attached in one place, it feels like going through twice is going to be much more secure. So give it all a good tug. And then I can do the same thing I did on the other button. A really tight knot. Cut it close. Ta-da! And that's it. Attaching buttons to your knitting.